What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out Hand of Merlin. Not quite as interesting of a game as Leg of Merlin, because you know that's what we're all here for. But I'm sure somebody will get it on a subreddit somewhere. My name is Splattercat, and today we're going to sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games so that you don't have to. If you haven't seen Hand of Merlin before, I played the demo of this game when it came out during like a Steam Festival, I think like seven or eight months ago. And I was kind of like, eh, okay. Uh, if you've never played it before, I know that sounds kind of lukewarm. But actually, I spent some time with it before recording this video, and I feel like it has improved since that demo. That demo was kind of... It had lots of balance issues, it had like weird things going on with it, and I was like, eh, I'll sit on it for a little bit and see if they fiddle with it. So anyways, Hand of Merlin, this is a tactical strategy roguelike, is what the game is calling itself, where you take a party of heroes, and your goal is to go as far into the realms of Camelot as you possibly can while trying to take the Holy Grail back to its point of origin. Over the course of this game, you'll unlock new characters, you'll upgrade gear, it has RPG mechanics, it has character building. It's actually got a lot more in common with like XCOM than just about anything else when it comes to the combat system. And so abilities in this game are very, very powerful, but at the same time you don't get like a lot of them. And the choices that you make with your abilities are going to really, really change the way that the overall gameplay unfolds. If after watching this video you wanted to get the game for yourself, I'll have a link for you down below in the description so you can check that out. And then you'll also find links to my Twitch stream, my Twitter, and also to my Discord, which is the central hub for my community, just in case you wanted to shout at me in person. Let's start the game on off. we got about 25 minutes to play with, and I want to make the most of it. Now, we can inspect our heroes over here. I actually wanted to see if the upgrades that I give them persist in between runs. I don't think that they do. It will be weird if that was the way that it works, but I did want to check. And then we can also check out our core over here. Uh, the core allows you to buy magic spells in between runs. You're going to unlock magical cores. And once you have magical cores, you can unlock abilities. Right now, I've got restoration unlocked. You can also get translocation, which allows you to teleport people around. You can get warp. You can get all kinds of things that what kind of vastly change the flow of combat and give you market advantages versus the enemy. Let's start a new game. We're going to play on normal difficulty. And I think we've got to pick our heroes. Yeah, my core has already been assigned. I've got a healing spell for right now because I found that to be kind of useful. I thought that a healing spell would be really, really good because, like, what's one of the big issues that you have when you're playing XCOM? Somebody takes a lot of damage. You need them to pull off a turn that is critical to your overall strategy. And then, like, they're going to take return fire and possibly die. The ability to heal to me seems like a really, really big deal in a game like this that has limited healing available. And so, anyways, we'll go next. we got to pick our party over here. Uh, there's nobody to really pick for right now. We pretty much have Brunor, Merowyn, and Morgan. But as we go further and further on into the game, we'll unlock other heroes that give you more varied skill sets and allow you to play around with things. Brunor is your standard fair warrior. He hits people. He pushes people around. He's pretty. He does more or less what he says on the tin. He takes a lot of damage, so on and so forth. Merowyn is an archer. That is pretty much everything you expect. She shoots arrows at things. She can hold overwatches. Bam, bam, bomb. Morgan is the interesting character in this group because you can build him in a number of different ways. You can turn him into a damage monster, you can turn him into a buff bot, and he's the one that I actually enjoyed fiddling around with the most, but that's just because I have kind of like a inset favor towards mages. Whenever I play D&D or like Shadowrun or anything else, I tend to be a mage or like a wizard of some kind, and I like having lots of tools in my toolkit, and he definitely has that. Let's start the game. After many days of travel, you've arrived at Camelot. Before you lies the heart of Albion, King Arthur's dream made manifest. Here you will find the Grail and begin your quest. We get 33 gold, 4 food, 1 mana, and 40 fame. Fame is basically XP. That's all you need to know about fame. The only difference is, this game is kind of strange in the sense that you can lose XP. Uh, so like, if you certain things that you do, because XP is tied to fame, Basically, if you do things that are not honorable, you will lose fame and it will limit your ability to upgrade your characters. They give you almost enough fame right here for your first level up, but not quite. These days there is a harshness to Camelot that is born of King Galahad's long and costly war against the Saracens. The martial prowess of Arthur's knights has been maintained, but all else is stripped away. Galahad has grown old and weak and the weight of his kingship rests heavy on his shoulders. He is filled with regrets. Take the grail, he says bitterly. It is of as little value to me as it was to Arthur at Camelon. 
I thought its discovery portended the healing of the world, that I had been chosen as an instrument of divine will to bring the true faith to the heathens. But what have I accomplished? Nothing but bloodshed. It was vanity in the end, and the grail is but one of Merlin's trinkets. He holds the grail out towards you. See, it even changes its appearance according to who bears it. Merlin loves his little trickeries and glamours. Tell me, what is the greatest virtue of all? We can choose piety. That's going to allow us to reset all of our cooldowns for all of our allies on one turn. Or we can go with Valor, which gives you an extra action point on that round. This is a powerful artifact. You can only use it once per combat. I like Valor better because having three AP on a turn can be really useful for blitzing somebody down when you're outnumbered. And so that's what I'm going to go for. As you take the Grail, its appearance changes, shifting before your very eyes. <laughs> As I said, Merlin and his glamours. Galahad laughs bitterly. Don't be too impressed. They're magician's tricks. There's no signs of divine truth in it. No matter. Take it and be gone. As the doors of the throne room close behind you, a young lady of the court pulls you aside. The king has fallen into despair, she whispers. He sees the darkness ahead, but the burden of his endless war against the Moors is too heavy. If Camelot does not act, who will? Let me use what little power I have to aid you. Do you require supplies or perhaps services of Galahad's blacksmiths? We don't really have any money right now, so like the blacksmith is not going to be altogether that helpful, so I'm going to take the food. So be it. I hope the king will forgive me for helping you. He's quick to anger nowadays, and I believe that in his soul he still holds a remnant of the old faith. Now the burden he failed to bear is yours. Good luck. God be with you. So here's our journey. We have an overworld map. Uh, these are basically normal encounters. You never know what's going to happen on like any of these. If you, Just in case you were confused, the game does give you a helpful little legend over on this right-hand side so that you can quickly by eye identify pretty much anything that's going on within the realm. We're up here, and we've got to move to this node right here, so that's exactly what we'll do. In the distance, you see many bright pavilions on a great wide green field. The sounds of merrymaking echo across the hills. A tournament? We'll attend. Large crowds have gathered to watch the competition and, of course, the jousting. Bards are singing, people are dancing, and for a moment you entirely forget about the coming cataclysm. And we can participate based on our characters in jousting or in archery. Let's go with archery. Merowyn decides to participate in the archery contest. The rules are such. Each participant will get three attempts at the target. Depending on where the arrow strikes, they'll be awarded points. Whoever gathers the most wins. And so now we've got to roll a die and just kind of see what happens here. Uh, this is all down to luck. There's no guarantee that we're going to get anything out of this. We scored kind of a middling amount of points. On to round two. Hopefully we'll score a seven in here somewhere. I'm going to go hard left. Three points again. Apparently we're not that good at this. I keep missing it by like one step. If we want to win, I, I think winning is probably out of our realm of comfort now. Hey, we got the seven. There we go. That's what we needed. So we did 13 points. Once the points are tallied, Merowyn won the competition. The other archeries gracefully accept her victory, and a fair damsel delivers her prize. All in all, a good, ga or good day's work. We got the Poppy of the East. We got 13 fame, and we got five food. I'll take that, because that is going to allow us to upgrade our characters up to level 2. So, boom, everybody goes up to level 2 before we've even had our first combat. Uh, Bruinor, we get to pick a new ability for him. We get three cards. We get Cleave, which allows us to hit multiple enemies. Actually, all enemies that are in attack range. Uh, we've got Stand Ready, which gives us a reaction strike. So, anybody that moves or attacks in your range gets smacked back. And then we have Lunge. That allows us to move to a location and deal 7 damage. Not too bad. I'm going to take Lunge. Uh, on Merowyn, we get to choose between three abilities. We have Take Aim. That's going to give us three stacks of aiming, which means that our attacks cannot miss. I don't know if that counts for parry. Parry is super annoying in this game. Enemies put up parry very, very frequently, and parrying basically has a chance to negate all damage you would have dealt. If aiming bypasses parry, I think it's a pretty good counter. If not, it's useless. Uh, we have Quick Draw. We can deal two damage twice to enemies near us. And then we have Point Blank. Deal five damage to an enemy in melee range. I'm going to go with... Let's go with Point Blank. That sounds good. And it is important to note, the last time I played through this game, different abilities got pulled. So it's random what you get when you make these choices, which should lend some variability to the way things go. What does the Poppy of the East do? You get Lethargic, and you gain an action point. 
Okay, so that means you can get three action points this turn in exchange for only having one next turn. So that's a burst down ability. I like burst down abilities, so that's fine. I'm not going to use that unless I can end the enemy right now. Oh, uh, we've got Raise Totem. Create a low cover at target position. This game does have a cover system for ranged attacks. We have Desecration. Desecrate an area in range dealing two damage on contact. It lasts for three turns. We have four stacks of Caustic Weaponry. So plus four damage dealt to armor. So that's going to help us take armor off the enemy a little bit faster. I like Desecration, and I like Caustic Coating. I'm going to go with Desecration, I guess. Just because its damage potential is higher. Yeah, that'll work. We'll close that on down. Everybody's leveled up. We're looking a little bit better. Let's be on our way. It looks like down to the south, uh, we've got an Arcane Node right there. And it looks like we got some other things, and that'll take us to the city of Ostrich. Uh, we've also got another direction out here we can go both of these are blocked off by heroic nodes which kind of worries me i don't know if we can handle a heroic node i'm gonna go for the path of least resistance and go south your journey takes you past a graveyard in the thick fog its melancholy is doubled but somehow you're drawn to it nonetheless it is impossible not to contemplate death on a quest such as yours most of the graves are old but one is freshly dug and open you do not see a gravekeeper uh let's look for him you find no trace of the Gravekeeper, but there's fresh blood on the walls of an old mausoleum. Something's amiss here. Banditos! Okay, so we're in combat now. Uh, my recording software unfortunately crashed on me, so you guys missed the opening turns. We got ambushed by the bandits, so they got an opening turn, which is why my characters look so scuffed. In case you were wondering, uh, they are really far away, so we're gonna have to close the gap with these dudes and just kind of keep up with them. I'm gonna move him over to there. Every single turn you get two AP that are listed right here. You can use those on your abilities. Everything is clearly labeled. And actually, I'm fairly happy with the way that the game lays everything out for you. On the right-hand side, we've got our magic spells and how much mana we have remaining. Uh, the mana is a rare resource, though. You don't get this restored every single combat. You only get this from events and from having it, like, given to you. And so keep that in mind. I'm gonna dash her over to here. We're basically going to push on this guy really, really hard. We're going to move our mage over to this side, and then we're going to use Hephaestian Salts to recover her armor a little bit. Uh, the meters on these guys, that's their health, that's their armor. It does exactly what you think it does. All damage goes to armor uh, before it goes to anything else. Apparently, he popped off Evasion, which is super bad because that means we're going to have to sit here and try and swing at him for a while, and then all of his boys are going to get lined up before we can get that done. Luckily, it looks like some of the damage is being refocused on our warrior for right now, which is absolutely something that I can live with, so I'm not going to be upset about that. He used his whole turn, and actually, this works out okay. Uh, we're going to move over to here, and we're going to lunge. There we go. All right, so a bunch of damage out to him. For you right here... Let's go with a shot to right there. This guy's got dodge, so we're not going to be able to hit him anyways. It's not really going to be that important of a thing to undertake. I'll move to right here so that maybe we can get a double attack here somewhere. And then he's got desecration. How much does that cost? One. Okay. So what I'd like to do then, when I cast this, how large is it? Pretty big. Okay. We'll move you to right here. And then we'll kind of play with it and see if we can get it to do what I... There we go. That works. We'll desecrate that area. That'll keep them burning. And then when they take their turns, bad things are going to happen. Ah, they take damage for every tile that they move, too. Fantastic. My wizard's getting a little bit scuffed up, though, which is a bit of a bummer. Apparently, he's got a point-blank shot that he can take right there. But these guys are pretty much going to melt before they ever get a chance to do anything, I think. The real question, I think, is what's going to happen with this guy. They're focus firing my wizard. Okay, well, I mean, that wasn't altogether unexpected that they were going to focus fire the wizard. Let's go. That guy's going to die anyways, so let's move down to here, and we'll run an attack on him. These guys are squishy, but they have, like, a higher damage output than any of, like, the, any of the melee warriors. So I can hit you right there. I think it's actually a better choice to go after you. And then I'm going to put up Overwatch so that if anybody moves, I get a shot off on him. Our wizard is up. That's good because I need him to use Hephaestian Salts on himself to soak a little bit more damage. And then I need one of these guys to go away. Sooner rather than later, preferably. 
So I'll go ahead and throw a fireball at him. Perfect. I don't know if it's a fireball. It might be an ice ball. It might be a sparkle ball. I have no idea what I just threw at this guy, okay? All I know is that it hurt. It made you go, ew, when it hit you. Like, kind of like in a weak way. You're like, ew. Hey, there we go. We got the kill off right there from the Overwatch. And then this dude's going to move back into the fire and take even more damage. Yeah, I think the desecration's going to work out for us. Desecration's feeling like a solid choice. Uh, I need healing on him, please. That's a free action. You don't have to worry about paying for it. And then we've got Prophetic Aim for right now. I'm going to block him off. We can't step on the fire, obviously, because that's going to cause us some problems. But I can shoot off an arrow right there, and then we can shoot off a magic spell right there, and this guy should be down. Mm, you can just pass your turn. I don't want you to do anything. Oh, he gets another turn. Do we have, like, an initiative track anywhere? I need an initiative track to figure out who's going to be, like, playing and who's going to be doing what. Because, like, I had thought for certain this fight was over. What was, yeah, there we go. Just shield bash him to death real fast, and he's down. It'll give us a look at our loot right here. We got one mana back, and we got some fame, so that's really, really good. And I'll see you back on the overworld map. Your enemies lie dead. You are ready to continue your journey. You glance back one final time, knowing that you date one will fall and be buried. You can only hope that it's not in vain. Uh, at the end of combat, all your armor is restored, but your HP is not. So your HP is persistent, which is why I decided to heal him, because he was getting to the point of combat ineffectiveness, where he could just get rushed down and eliminated. We'll go over to this node right here and see what's going on. As you are crossing a narrow passage in the high hills with a sheer drop to either side of you, brigands block your path. You turn to retreat, but they are behind you as well. Clearly, you have walked into a trap. Surrender everything you own and we'll let you live, the leader says with a leering, bloodthirsty grin. We can intimidate them. Yeah, let's try that. Brunor laughs as he draws his weapon. Come then, fools. Let me reward you for your insolence. This isn't what they expected. They're clearly frightened of him, but they attack you nonetheless. Oh, he does one extra damage in this combat. Hell yeah. So the battlefield is joined. Uh, are they aware of me right now? Sometimes, yeah, it doesn't look like they're actually, like, aware of me. Do they have, like, what do these little arrow marks mean? I think that's when they become aware of me. I think. We'll move you up to here. We'll move you out to here. We'll set up an overwatch, I think. Just in case, because I don't know exactly what's going to play out right here. And then we'll move up to this side. And then you've got a little bit of HP missing. I don't actually know if these guys are, like, aware of us. So sometimes you get, like, a surprise round, just like in XCOM, and then they get, like, a scatter round. But, like, I think it needs to be clearly labeled. So if you go in and the enemy is not aware of you, it should say surprise round, like in the middle of the screen or whatever. I'm going to wait and see what they do. Oh, they are aware of us. Okay, they're absolutely aware of us. Fair enough. Well, we've got a really good fighting position for right now, and they've got to close the gap with us for multiple turns, so we should be able to eliminate somebody nice and early. Uh, for you, I want you to dash over to here and lock them down, please. I don't care who you attack. Just attack somebody. Uh, we've got a shot right here. Yeah, we'll go for that, I guess. If I can get that warrior nice and taken care of, I'd feel better about all this. She can't do anything unless she's in point-blank range. So I think actually moving her up to right here might be a good assist. With you, with Desecrate, what can I do out here? Because, like, I definitely, like, I'm in the mood for some Desecration out here. Okay. Well, I think there's a creative solution right there, so that's what I'm going to do. That'll block that that'll block that archer from closing with us any further. Unless he's a big dummy. If he's a big dummy, then you know it's not gonna help out altogether that much. He's just gonna whittle away a bunch of his own health, but Oh, he's just gonna fire from I've actually created an obstacle for myself. Okay, so he just used counterattack, which means no matter what I do, he's gonna be able to counterattack me. We'll wanna soak that with our warrior. What was that turn? Honestly, I've no idea. I don't know what that turn was. It was something. Uh, we're going to move over to here. He got the reaction slash. That's okay. I meant to do that. I wanted to soak it. And then we'll hit him. Perfect. You finish him off. Oh, it's not ideal. I'm not crazy stoked about that. 
That sort of threw a wrench into this whole thing. Mm. He must have had a cover bonus right there that I didn't consider. I could have moved to there and shot him and got 100%. Yeah, he had a cover bonus. I was wondering what went wrong with that situation because I've actually I've, I've never seen them miss before. Uh, but you gotta have you gotta have kind of like an adjacency thing going on. Yeah, gain an action point, I guess. We'll move over to here, and then we'll point blank this dude to finish it out. Perfect. He's been point blanked. Uh, Wazard. I'm going to need you to wazard it up, my guy. I'm going to need you to wazard out here. Good chance he'll get focus fired if I do this. Let's go with Hephaestus and Salts on him because he's pretty scuffed up for right now. And then we'll go over to this side and we'll get into cover. I believe the little arrow marks are showing you where you've got cover from. Yeah, if you guys just want to step on more poison, I firmly endorse this decision. Step on as much poison as you want to step on. Or step on as much fire. He's dead now. He's now doing the whole Rage Against the Machine thing and sleeping now in the fire. She can move to here to cover. He can move. He's got enough armor to soak a turn. He'll be okay. He's not going to die. He'll be fine. So he's going to take an action right there. I'm going to have to decide. Oh, he moved out of the fire for me. What a champ. Okay, we'll move down to here then. And I punch you in the face. Sometimes the simple solutions are the best solutions. So enjoy getting punched in the face. Uh, we got 47 bucks, we got a little bit of food, and we got some fame. Searching the brigand's hoard, you find supplies and gold that are largely stolen. Yeah, I'll take it. Absolutely. There is no shame in taking these things. Their true owners are likely dead anyways. That's kind of a dark way to look at it, but I accept this because, frankly, I'm greedy. And so, you know, in the interest of me making profit, I'm going to go ahead and take care of business here. Uh, we do have a... Oh, I can only travel that direction. I wasn't looking at the arrows. Okay, so we're going to have to take the heroic node, which means I'm probably going to get, like, shat in half, and it's going to suck, but we'll do our best. A commotion in the street draws your attention. No, an old man in tattered robes is telling a young nobleman, I will not listen to reason. There is an authority greater than that of the mind. When the old man sees you, he points a finger. See, sweet Kanak, I told you there would be a sign. This is my chance to seek forgiveness for my sins. Do not deny me my salvation, child. He offers you a sack full of golden coins. Take it. It is the will of providence. Uh, what about this generosity? My name is Boso of Rigichin. The old man explains, I served the king once, the true king, Arthur. I commanded men in his name and fought at Atun and Soissons. He raised me up to glory, but I did not believe in his visions of the future. I shamelessly enriched myself and forgot his legacy. But now the end is upon us. I have seen it in my dreams and my sins weigh heavily upon me. What use have I for gold now when my very soul is in peril? My nephew, Kanak here, does not wish to see me reduced to poverty, but the poor are blessed and last shall be first. So take this gold and let my soul fly free. All right, cool, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. He beams. I feel lighter already. Mayhaps there is hope left for this old soul of mine yet. Alright. Well, heroic node, here we come. Following a path through the hills, you hear screams and the sounds of battle. Soon a figure comes running, then two and many more. They are peasants, some of them but children, running in sheer blank faced terror at what they have seen. They came from nowhere, a woman tells you, shaking, her hands covered in someone else's blood. Not unseen, but from the air itself. They ripped. I, I can't. My eyes hurt when I think of it. I defend you. You follow the path the peasants came from. Those who stayed behind to protect their families have been slain, but their actions bought their loved ones time. Put an end to this horror. I shall. All right, so I've never fought abominations before. Uh, the ground is undulating and writhing, which makes me feel really nervous. It's 10 and 2, and he has Xeno Pollen. So on death, he deals 5 health damage to enemies in melee range. Okay, he hits for 5. We might be okay out here. How far can he move? He can move four, so he can move eight on a dash. All right, you come over to here. You come over to here. 
I don't know if I can fire over these rocks, but I'm going to try. Worst case scenario. It's going to take him two turns to get over here anyways, so I've got a chance to wheel if I need to. Ooh, there's another one over there. I didn't see that one. Okay. Mm, fall back. Man, do a little, do a little fallback action over here. Do a little, do a little bit of the old fallback action. Oh, I was wondering why they were haphazardly working their way towards me. Oh, they're ranged mobs too. Fantastic! But at least our wizard has good reflexes. He slapped that thing out of the air like it didn't even matter. The Overwatch is the big problem here. I don't like that in the slightest. The overwatch is a huge issue. All right, so you come down to here, maybe eat the overwatch, deal some damage to that thing. He's on evading two right now. Foof. Not in love with what's happening here. Okay, so we can't stack up damage on him like I want to either. Oh, and we, we're actually blocked. I can't move out, so I gotta move him out of the way so that I can move all these guys out of the way too. Gotcha. All right, well, Archer's Vigil for right now, just in case anything decides to move. We're kind of in a realm of backup plans right now. You put Desecration on him so that he burns. Punish him for being an Archer. And then we'll go Hephaestian Salts on himself. I don't want my mage to be tanking all this. Yeah, and with a further concern... Hey, he blocked it again. My man. My man. Ew, dude. He blocked the hole. That's not what I wanted. Okay, so he's evading. What happens if I knock somebody back into somebody else? Oh, it just moves them that way. Gotcha. Okay, makes sense. Uh, we're going to need the Grail of Valor here, and we're going to need to, like, do something. Uh, so I'm going to get an extra AP so that I can move him over to here. Oh, there's acid on the ground. I didn't even notice. Disgusting. Okay. Um, You excuse yourself from this combat. If we hit this, he dies. And he did indeed die, so that's good. We've got one of them down, something that I'm actually pretty thankful for. He's going to take four damage if he moves over to there. He takes no damage if he moves to right there. Let's move him to there then. We'll kind of. I think we got really, really lucky with the landscape on this map. But there is tactical decision making to this game, which I like. When I initially came in and I noticed that the game does not have like, so it doesn't have attacks of opportunity. It doesn't have like this, that, or the other. Like I was really concerned that that was going to severely negatively impact the way that the game played tactically. But actually not the case at all. It seems to work out pretty well just with how it's orchestrated. Uh, and I don't think I've ever seen a game that has a like a lack of attacks of opportunity and other things that sort of like lift up ranged characters. Let's move over to here. I don't know what this AoE is right here, but I've got a suspicion that I don't want to be in it. Yeah, just kind of get away from whatever that is. Restore your armor real fast because it is melting off much too quickly for my liking. And we've still got other enemies that we like need to deal with here. Yeah, they're hard focusing the mage. It's okay. We've still got like healing spells available. Like we still have backup plans. He's going to come back around, which is exactly what I was hoping he would do. Uh, right here. I'm going to move you to right there and see if I can kill this thing. It's now dead. Did it deal any damage or anything to me? It did not. Great. Okay, so move over to here, and we'll start the engagement with this guy, with somebody that's fresh. This elite combat wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Don't get me wrong. It definitely... We took a little bit of a scuffing. But I'm going to move you over to here. And then I'm going to move you out to here. 
Okay, that went to the person that I was hoping it would go to. Oh, and then an Overwatch right there too. Lovely. Okay, close the gap. Eat the Overwatch. I'm not going to bypass an entire turn so that this guy can just do whatever he wants for the next X amount of time. Oh, that's a big miss right there. Feels bad. Feels bad. Okay. Um, Let's go Archer's Vigil just in case he tries to flee that combat right there. Hephaestus, we've already used it all up. I think our play for now is to light this man on fire. I was hoping he would evac, but oh, he's got to double it. Oh, we got to kill him like right now. My man needs to go. So there's four damage. Hopefully we don't get a big miss streak right here. Perfect. Well, he finished off the combat. Achievement unlocked. Into the fire. Knock back or pull an enemy so it takes damage from a ground effect. Nice. Okay, so we got an achievement right there. A little bit of mana, a little bit of fame. I'll take it. You use the grail to move the corrupt energies of the cataclysm, healing the wound in the veil. The peasants are safe now, thanks to you. You have saved many lives today, the woman you had spoken to before the battle tells you. There are many in this realm who would not have done so. They would have considered our lives cheap and easy to toss away when it suits them, so we are doubly grateful. Let us honor you with a gift. Oh, cool, he got an arming sword. That'll give him plus one damage. Heal, yeah, brother. And so before we end the episode, I did want to show you the upgrades that are available. So I'm actually going to beeline straight for the city uh, instead of going for that extra event right there. Uh, you can enter a city, and inside cities, there's squares, you can explore, you can visit a healer, you can retire for the day. Uh, this place looks like it's going to have events, but basically inside the marketplace, uh, you'll be able to actually go in. Oh, we're stuck for right now. I can't show it to you. Weak. Okay, we'll go to the square. Uh, we'll go to the blacksmith. There we go. Perfect. So each of these guys has gear that you can upgrade. And so, like, we can upgrade his armor. That'll give him plus five armor. Uh, we can upgrade his weapon to give him a little bit more damage. Uh, for our archer, we can give her power. Sometimes there's branching paths in the upgrades of these bows and these swords and things. And they'll kind of change things around. So, for example, if our warrior takes a bastard sword, he'll get a bunch more attack power, but his movement will be readily much weaker. So he'll be harder to move around the battlefield in exchange for essentially hitting like a truck. Uh, with, like, some of her branching paths, she gets more damage to enemies that are closer. With other ones, she gets more range. With other ones, she gets more movement. It just kind of depends. With him, he can get more power. Uh, but he's basically got kind of the same upgrade path as this dude over here. I would hope that as the game develops, your weapons and your armor would actually upgrade to match the tooltip of whatever it is that you have over here. I think that would be a nice immersive effect to have, but you know me. I've got kind of like that mindset that, you know... When I upgrade something, I should see a physical appearance in my character. But this is Hand of Merlin. I hope you guys enjoyed it. My only concerns as of right now are that the game was really crashy when I was recording it. It was not crashy at all, though, when I was not recording it. So if you're buying this game for the intent of playing it on your channel or doing something for you, just be aware that OBS, Bandicam, like five different programs that I tried, had issues recording this game. Uh, but that was the only technical aspect of the game I had a problem with. Inside of the options menu... Fairly limited. You got the volume mixer. Graphics in here, you can decide whether you want the anti-aliasing. Uh, the max rendering resolution is actually probably the problem for that. I didn't notice this. So swapping this off of Vulcan and to something else actually probably would have fixed the recording issues and I just skipped over that entirely. So disregard my further earlier complaint. Uh, Performance-wise, you can decide on apparently how much you want to use here of these various attributes of a computer to apply to the rendering speeds and whatnot of the game. And inside of gameplay, you can change the animation speed. Very important for a... Very, very important for a turn-based game. Sometimes you want to play through the combats quickly, and then you can also disable the end turn with AP confirmation if you wanted to. So there you go. Hand of Merlin. I'll see you guys later. Thank you for joining me. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Tomorrow I'll have something hot and fresh for you off the indie skillet. Bye, everybody.